I'm Tony Morrison with GLAAD, and I'm talking icons with Sony Music Group with the one and only Isaac Dunbar. Hi, What's Tony. Going on, my I'm doing good. How are you doing? I'm so good. We good. are talking icons today. When yeah. you hear icon, first of all, mm. your bag. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Thank you. Her name Iconic. Is, her name is Ruby. Okay. Um, I love her so much. She's going through it today, like I said earlier. Awesome. <laughs> but everybody has those days. If you're not going through it, you're not yeah. doing it right. Yeah, do you see her? <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Um, <laughs> but you. when you hear icon, hmm. what words come to mind for you? Bravery. Okay. Legacy. Ooh. Um, a disruptor that can also like unify at the same time. Okay. I would say those four words. There's a lot of intention there. Yeah. So going off of those words, iconic people. Hmm. What comes to mind for you? Bowie. Ooh. Bowie, Freddie Mercury. Okay. Elton John, Prince, Madonna. There's so many. Um, I, I love my icons. What makes that group of people iconic for you? Like I, I said, they, they disrupted but also unified. There were things going on at the time that were completely like contrary to who they were. And they were able to go in being very brave and change everything. And through that, I think that's what makes them icons. Has this group of people also inspired your music? Yeah. In what ways? Sonically, um, the instruments, especially from those certain eras. Yeah. I love nostalgia and incorporating that into my music. I love doing it. I love that. And you know, across thank you. I, across the trajectory, and I guess you could say spectrum of queer history. Mm. You know, is there an era that resonates with you? It it sounds like with the artists that inspire you that there's a a, a, a piece of them that that sways into a certain era that might inspire Definitely. you. Definitely. Um, the '70s for sure. Um, Everything that was going on, yeah, very inspiring um, for what I'm doing today. The fashion, mm -hmm. uh, the music, the way that artists would express themselves is so inspiring to me. Let me talk about you. Yeah. <laughs> What's your vibe? How would you describe hmm. Isaac Dunbar as an artist or even just a person? Very free. Okay. I like to I like to break rules. I feel I like to rebel. We have a rebel a on our hands here. Yeah. But I think it's so important, especially if you want to create something that's special and catches attention. Um, I would describe it as very free and fluid um, and rebellious. Okay. We're going to get into this rebellion mm. of, of, that is within you, but I want to talk a little bit about your art, your craft, music. What, cool. what set you on this path so early on? Yeah. Um, well, in I think 2012, Gaga announced Art Pop. Yes, Gaga. <laughs> <laughs> I was I was like eight or nine at the time, and she tweeted out some producers she was working with, um, Madian and Zed. So good. Um, they really caught my attention, yeah. and so I studied Madian's music, and he he makes or at the time he made very like disco-y music with a lot of French influence. He's French. And I found out the program he uses, FL Studio. And I taught myself how to produce through like YouTube tutorials and reproducing my favorite songs and learning synthesis and yeah. like how to create any sound I want through like synths. And that's how I got started. And then I, honestly, the lyrics didn't come until I was about 11. At first I was just making instrumentals, um, almost like EDM music yeah. somewhat. Um, still with like a lot of melody and chords um, and the lyrics came at 11. I started writing just about like random things and I love to create like worlds and stuff when I got home from school. Yeah. I was really just obsessed with going home after school, having an escape and being able to create music that I found solace in. And at the time it was that EDM stuff yeah. and that French house. I think really like hardships and needing an escape was the catalyst. At what point do you feel you were able to 
combine your queerness with your art? And mm. what was that experience like? And I see your reaction right now and it's... Yeah. You know, I, it was never conscious. It wasn't conscious. It was always in the music. And even when I hear those demos that I did when I was nine or <laughs> whatever, um, I could hear the, the queerness in it. I, I, I don't know how to describe it, but like, it's, I don't know if it's in the chords, if it's in my voice, I don't know. But there's something about it that just felt a little camp, a little theater, very expressive, mm -hmm. um, unafraid. I love that. Speaking Thank of unafraid, you. I want to uh, read the first line from your song, Bleach. Mm. It says, I should bleach my hair to make my parents mad especially dad. Mm. That really stuck out for me and it was the first line, but it's everything after that I feel in the song and in that really fun music video Thank you. was just so intentional, but also rebelliousness yeah, yeah. as well. Tell totally. me a little bit about that and that song. Oh yeah, honestly, when I first made Bleach, I, I had made like this chord progression and that was the first line that came out of me, period. Um, I should bleach my hair. It just felt very right. And then I sort of investigated that feeling and it felt like pure rebellion. And I pursued that throughout the rest of the song. The process of bleaching hair to making parents mad. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're doing things that were like Gen Z. I, I don't like saying that, but like Gen Z. We're doing things that seem a bit out there to people that may be older sometimes. Right. And um, in order for there to be change in the world, people have to be uncomfortable. And if that mm. makes, if that means making your parents mad, so be it. Yeah. What is it about creating and crafting that song? Mm. It's like your favorite part. The theatrics. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> I love just being, I love the, the vocal range of the melody just being able to jump around and I love how free it sounds. I've been using that word a lot. I love that. <laughs> yeah. I love all the words here. Free, sonic, Thank I love you. it. And your album, mm. Banish the Banshee. Yes. Who is the Banshee and why are we banishing them? <laughs> and also, what an incredible album title. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, the Banshee is an alter ego I made for this record. Um, the Banshee is a very theatric, comical, but dark, very blunt character. Mm -hmm. And I sort of use this character to tell certain tales about my, my life. And you asked why the Banshee is being banished. Um, well, that whole title is um, from the concept song called Banish the Banshee. And the whole song is a metaphor for me feeling like a black sheep for a lot of my life. I mean... I grew up in a pretty religious household. I was gay, black, um, not in a space surrounded by anybody like me at all. I grew up in Massachusetts. So it was a really interesting experience yeah. growing up as me, I guess. And as the Banshee, I felt banished, but I don't want that to sound like I'm a victim. I want to reclaim it. And that's how I do it. through this album and through all the songs. Yeah, and, and listen, I think imag I imagine through your song, your craft, your mm -hmm. art, you're able to really overcome but own your story Thank you. as yeah. well. What was, well. What was that experience? Was there a moment that helped you kind of own that, own that story for you and kind of not turn things around, mm -hmm. but really kind of set you on the path of like, this is who I am and this is yeah. who I am in music too. Mm -hmm. I think it's honestly a combination of everything. It's a combination of music and me doing what I'm doing that gave me a lot of confidence mm. to be myself. Um, also just experiencing life. Yeah. You, you're, you're in yourself and you're like, okay, I'm unhappy with how I'm presenting myself. This is how I felt and I need to make a change. If I wanna feel comfortable in my skin, like I just have to be myself. And that takes bravery, I think, and just going out every day and wearing what you want to wear and talking how you want to talk. Um, it's a conscious decision sometimes that has to be made if you were raised in an environment where that wasn't really encouraged. Being a young queer artist in the music industry, mm -hmm. what has that experience been like for you? 
And yeah. how is, I imagine, how has that changed and evolved the time you've been making, making music? It's been, it's been quite eventful. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of good things have come out of it. So many, so many good things. Um, and of course there's bad moments or I don't know, just like random things happen. But that's just life. Um, it's been really good. I've been enjoying making music and I'm so grateful that I'm just able to do this. It's the only thing I can do. <laughs> I don't think it's the only thing, but you're, you're doing pretty good. <laughs> Honestly, it's, it's, what I, it's like, it feels like it's the only thing I can offer. But anyways, um, I have had a pretty good experience so yeah. far. Um, I'm at a point in my career where I'm able to go out and do things. I know a lot of people like can't do that. Um, but so far, so good. I love that. Yeah. I love that. And I can Thank just you. see the, the smile and, and the vibe. The vibe. That you are just outputting <laughs> now is just yeah. uh, electric, sonic, I should Thank say. You. Oh my goodness. I mean, um, when it comes to, you know, queerness and, and, and visibility mm. and even a sense of belonging, yeah. do you feel like you are a bit of this representation that you didn't have growing up when you were younger? I think so. Growing up, I was a very, I was a very spacey child, very sensitive, okay. very into like art and stuff. Um, I needed something that could give me confidence and strength to go out and do everything that I loved. Yeah. And so that's what I, I, I wanna be, the, the icon for myself that I needed. I had Gaga, of course. She, she was my icon growing up. She still is one of my icons. And now if I have the opportunity to be able to express myself and be a source of solace for mm -hmm. people, I mean, it's the best reward that I could possibly ever get it sure. seems, in life, period. And you know, a lot of times LGBT issues and people tend to be hypersexualized or conflated with sex alone. Mm -hmm. I think in the music industry, there's that as well. Yeah. You know, there's just a one line of thinking I love your genre of creativity because it unlocks so many different facets. Thank you. With, when you talk about theatrics, in addition to your art and what you're making, how do you feel, how do you feel we can unlock it for people to think mm. multidimensionally as well? All it takes is representation mm. and seeing. I think in a few years, we're gonna look back on this question even and like the whole, gay hypersexualization um, trope. Like, we're gonna look on that like it's crazy because no two people are the same. You're gonna have a queer person that wants to be a firefighter. You're gonna have a queer person that wants to be a nail tech. I think all it takes is visibility and representation to show that we're not all the same. And if you want to be sexual, you do that. If you don't want to, you do that. Simple. Who do you want to be an icon for in the world? People that are trying to find themselves. Um, people that feel confident also, mm -hmm. the complete opposite. Um, people that just need like a burst of energy, I guess. Yeah. Young people like me. Thinking back to that version of yourself who maybe wrote that first song or first mm -hmm. line that you ever fell in love with, what was that Isaac Dunbar like? <laughs> <laughs> he was very wide-eyed, naive, full of love. He was very emotional, sensitive, always have been, always will. But that was definitely the space I was at. Okay. Yeah. And the Isaac Dunbar of today, mm. what advice would you give that version of yourself? Literally just do what you want to do. Like you have to, because it's your life. Nobody else can drive the boat for you. Nobody should be driving the boat for you. You should be doing that yourself. There's a healthy amount of dependence that you get from people and validation. And I would suggest to young Isaac, go to yourself for validation <laughs> instead of other people. I love it. Thank I you. think young Isaac would be happy to take that advice. I think so too. <laughs> He'd probably be like, okay, okay. But it's true. It really is true. Yeah. Yeah. Isaac, great. anything else? Or I want to say thank you for Appreciate having me. You. This was a great conversation. I love and that. I love these questions. Good. I'm glad that you are 
So open up your queerness and the joy, despite all that you've been through. But that's what, it, that's what it's all about, right? It is, truly. I'm just excited to see change in the world, to be honest. And there's a whole new wave of artists that are being introduced to us, and I'm really just excited for the future. Well, one last question, actually. Mm. Being part of that change, is it interesting to feel that you are part of that change, or how do you think about change for the community and, and mm. other people like yourself and people who are coming up behind you? Mm. First of all, I'm really grateful and even honored that I'm in this position, period. It's, it's really gratifying, <laughs> to be honest, because um, I've been through so much in my life. I've been through so much bullshit in my life in regards to my queerness, my identity. The fact that I'm able to have this platform and like do what I do. Is I love that. Well, thank honestly. you for making the music that you are because the world is listening. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for listening.